Welcome, Miracle Army. It's the team this time, narrated by your friend Pete. Today, we're working on a 1969 chassis for Mike. This is a replacement chassis, and we're going to showcase how to dismantle it the best way possible, efficiently. We're going to get it off to Media Blast and Strip. And our first order of business is going to be putting on jack stands. Always good to have good fitting, you know, so that it doesn't fall on you when you're working on it. Good quality set of jack stands. Taking your time and doing it right uh, will ensure safety for all parties. We're going to remove all of the wheels on this chassis. Uh, factory Volkswagen for 69 uh, lug nut size is going to be 19 millimeter, 19 three quarter, pretty close. Using an air impact, half inch electric impact will do the job pretty well. So Joey's going to start taking uh, apart the wiring from the starter. There's going to be various wires uh, dependent on the kit that you use when you restore your Volkswagen. We're going to keep all of the existing cabling for like backup switch for reverse lights. We won't be using brake lines again. We'll be uh, furnishing a new one. We'll put the part number here on the screen. We have John uh, disassembling the front end. Uh, the front ball joints are going to be a 19 millimeter wrench. They will be under tension. Uh, underneath each of the nuts is going to be a hardened washer. Not a you know, grade five washer is going to be used, but these are like grade nine, grade 10. Heavy duty washers, you're gonna to need to save those during your restoration because buying them is not an option uh, unless you go with a China manufacturer. Joey's removing the brake line clips. Uh, German clips are gonna be better than Chinese clip. Um, so we recommend saving those, cleaning them up, wire wheeling them. If you're familiar with the gun bluing process, uh, just gun blue them. Uh, it's going to be way better than anything you can buy aftermarket. On a 69 chassis, an interesting fact, the tie rod ends and for the both the, on the spindles and the steering box are going to be 19 millimeter. That is a new thing for 69, 66 through 68. Uh, there's going to be a couple months of 68, uh, late 68, that's going to have the 19s. But as a rule of thumb, anything that has a 17 millimeter tie rod nut is classified in those three years, 66, 67, and 68. So you see John here, and he's actually using a hammer to uh, dislodge what we call the swedge. So the eccentrics on the arms are kind of like it's uh, a swedge fit, and all you're trying to do is vibrate it loose. So it takes uh, a direct swing of the uh, a ball peen hammer, not a not a wood hammer, not a uh, carpenter's hammer, but actual. Uh, a good weighted hammer um, to kind of break it loose. You see me, I'm taking apart the uh, shift coupler. If I remember right, I think it's an 8 and a 13 on the MP uh, heavy duty shift coupler. Since this didn't have a tie wire, as you've seen in our other film, uh, this will be quick work that we're going to get uh, handled here. Looks like this clip was kicking Joey's ass. Uh, but he finally got it. So yay for Joey. The shift coupler we like to use, um, MP makes a, a, a nice HD one um, or a uh, good aftermarket. Um, if your original uh, cage is in good condition, then you can use like the Wolfsburg West um, internals, but use the cage. A German cage is better than pretty much anything except 
the MP heavy duty one is uh, pretty robust. Uh, we'll leave the part number here on the screen uh, where you can pick one of those up. So the uh, grub screw for the shift coupler is a square drive. Uh, we use one uh, that I got back uh, back in the day uh, from the Snap-on truck. Uh, I'll put the correct size uh, up here on the screen. If an OEM one is in good condition, good to clean it up and reuse. If not, uh, Wolfsburg West uh, carries some really nice uh, ones as well. When you're working with cables and uh, brake lines, you're going to replace them all new. No need to save them. The wear is just going to be a problem later down the line. So just cutting them makes quick work. Uh, Joe, uh, Joey uh, does a good job of this with a cutoff wheel. Um, everything, brake lines, e-brake cables, heater cables, um, accelerator cables, brake lines. Uh, he's basically one of those uh, honey badgers. You don't care going to cut right through it. Looks like I am taking off the uh, master cylinder bolts. These are going to be a 13 millimeter wrench. Um, they are a special size and you're going to have that firewall washer or excuse me uh, spacer in between and uh, you don't want to lose those because uh, then you got to buy them from me. Watch out, John. Joey's coming. Watch out. He's coming. God, I'm going to get you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You okay? Good. We're good to go. <laughs> uh, E-brake handle, the handbrake handle, has a end to it that has those three holes. You're going to want to keep that handy because the reproductions are junk. Heavy duty enough, it's got kind of a tapered ball seat, uh, adjustment nuts. Uh, one looks like what we call a, um, a barrel nut. It's kind of radius on one side, square on the other, and then has a jam nut on the other side. Uh, when you get a disc brake kit from us, it actually comes with uh, the correct nuts and stainless. So we used a lot, uh, use anises with that. So we're going to finish up the uh, master cylinder and we're not going to use this again. Um, some models uh, have a two prong brake light switch and some have a three. So you're going to want to take note of that depending on what year and model you have, whether you have the little brake light dash, uh, it's going to got a B with a circle on it on your dash. Uh, those would have a, uh, a different kind of brake light switch. Um, part number will be on the screen. So all the cabling on this vehicle, uh, accelerator cable, uh, clutch cable, heater cables, we're going to all put new ones on this chassis. Um, we use Wolfsburg West for all our cabling. I'll list all the cables, uh, original part numbers uh, for a 69, uh, as well as a link in the description for all the cabling that Wolfsburg West offers for this car. So the brake actuating rod on a 69 is kind of a C-clip that kind of goes over the uh, actuating rod itself and it has a uh, spring that falls into a groove. You're going to kind of get that spring out of the way and kind of release the tension. But there is a lot of dune in this pedal assembly, a lot of dune. 
on the upper uh, control arms that John's working on, the uh, there's a 19 millimeter uh, jam nut. Uh, we're talking wrench size here, and then the grub screw is actually an eight millimeter grub screw. So those uh, make quick work. Sometimes they're full of grease, and you got to kind of dig them out with a, uh, a small screwdriver. But pretty quick work uh, for for these here. As far as the rear drums, uh, the axle nut is a 36 millimeter uh, socket. Usually it uh, has a cotter pin. We have seen them without a cotter pin. Um, you're going to need a pair of uh, dikes, uh, like side cutters, to get the, uh, uh, the cotter pin out. Um, kind of like old and uh, archaic technology. Um, we like to use our new cotter pin replacement bolts uh, for this process um, to make it so you can reuse it and you don't ever have to worry about having a new cotter pin. So these specific axle nuts were on uber tight, like normally our uh, half inch snap-on in, uh, in uh, impact will just rip them off. Um, but these must have been put on with a uh, pretty sizable, maybe a three-quarter impact, because uh, we had to soak them. We had to let our air compressor like get all the way up to 175, and then we got to let it vibrate and hit it, but we got it. So I'm locating the uh, brake stop, brake pedal stop. It's also a 13 millimeter bolt and it's an eight millimeter one, two, five thread. Quick work. You wanna keep the stop. Um, if you're gonna put new pan halves, we use uh, Wolfsburg West pan halves. I'll put the part numbers on the screen here. Um, if you're going to use a uh, Wolfsburg fan, they come with a new um, pedal stop, but I always like to keep the factory one just in case. Sometimes it's it's like perfect. You don't have to do any notching, any uh, adjusting. It just bolts on and you're good to go. Again, we're not using any of the cables. I am taking out the actual heater lever. Heater lever uh, screws are going to be a 13, and they'll have this little plastic buffer between uh, the bracket and the, uh, the lever. You wanna keep those. handbrake handle uh, with a little persuasion you get the little pin to kind of rock might need a little taparoo here there we go that should be it there you go so there's going to be the e-brake handle the gear the pin and supposed to be a clip, a C spring clip on each side. Uh, as you saw in the, in the uh, promo, uh, it was missing one. Um, so we'll have to get a new one of those. We're just going to cut the uh, heater cable. Uh, we're not gonna use those again and uh, kind of move forward. So as far as Joey's concerned, he is removing, he's removed the drums and uh, he's removing the backing plate. And to remove the backing plate, there's gonna be four 14 millimeter socket uh, bolts um, that will remove the bearing cap and, uh, and the backing plates themselves. 
for me, I'm just taking the shift coupler off. Once again, we're not going to use it again. We're going to get a new one. Um, but we are going to use the shift linkage again. 99 out of 100, the shift linkage is perfect. So you pull it off, you wire wheel it, you paint it, you lube it, you put a new shift bushing in it, you call it a day, it works. You don't have to overthink it. So on the pitman arm, there's going to be a bump on the, the pitman arm. And if you tag it right, you're just going to loosen the swedge and it's going to pop right off just like it did there. Um, you don't have to hit it hard, but you have to hit it right and solid. So we're not going to be using this steering box at all. Uh, it'll be a core. Um, the pitman arm is junk. The steering box clamp is, is a good core. Um, but if yours and your position and, and your restoration, if you deem uh, the parts in good condition, you know, cleaning up, wire wheel, uh, painting, powder coating, and chasing your threads, you're good to go. Um, as far as the steering box is concerned, um, that's up to you. Um, in my opinion, going around and auditing every position of this chassis and making sure that everything is in good working order requires some legwork. Um, the pros make it easy. We offer the pro built steering box, uh, makes quick work of it. So I'm getting the uh, little firewall uh, bushings out of the center. Um, it was missing one, and but it's right in there in a little little crook crick, and uh, I think I'm gonna get it here. Uh, yeah, nope. Nope. Oh, we got a Sahara Dune in there. The the front end bolts, they're 19 millimeter. Uh, they're a different pitch. They're a 12 by 1.50 uh, when you're uh, chasing your threads. We do have a film up here that talks about all the threads we did on a 73 Gia and uh, that's pretty useful to make sure you have the right taps available. Starter nuts. Starter nuts should be 17 millimeter. It's on a 10 millimeter stud. Um, most of the starters used are going to be what's called a supporting starter, like not a self-supporting starter. So it has a starter bushing in the case. So identify the condition of that bushing uh, when doing your rebuild. Always good if you're going to go with a uh, like an OEM starter that you just replace that bushing and, and check that uh, as while we're in there kind of thing. The front inspection plate in between the beam for the shift rod to come out, the 10 millimeter uh, socket and six millimeter by 1.0 threads. The in, uh, CV joints are a special tool. I'll put it up here on the screen. Um, it's like a 12 point square drive or a, a triple square. Uh, it's a Volkswagen only. Some of them had Allen's. Um, not quite sure the year ranges when they were Allen's or uh, that custom different Torx. Uh, I have one, I've had it uh, for several years. Bought it off of the Snap-on truck and uh, still using it today. And I think I bought it in like 89, 90, like a long time ago. I still got it. Let's see. I took off the uh, Bowden tube bracket off the side plate. Uh, those are going to be 13 millimeter socket. And uh, the bracket is steel. Um, if you're rebuilding your tranny and you're getting a, a pro built transaxle, it will not come with it. So you're going to need to reuse your factory uh, Bowden tube bracket. The Bowden tube, we don't use them, uh, old ones. Uh, we use Wolfsburg West as a replacement. I'll put up the part number and the picture of replacements. 
as far as the spacers are concerned, we use a 12 millimeter stainless uh, washer. It's a little bit thicker than uh, your average washer, and it's stainless, so you can um, you need to you know, flatten the side to fit on the bracket or whatever. It's easy work uh, with the bench grinder. So a cool little technique, a set of pliers, open the jaws to a larger uh, setting inside of it, and you can actually walk the shift linkage to the front. So you just kind of like leverage it against the, the shift hole and just kind of walk it back and forth and it's going to come out the front of it. Uh, you might have to watch out for a fuel line, um, but usually uh, you can get in there and, and get it out pretty easy. So CV axle assemblies, you could rebuild them. I don't. It's cheaper to buy a new completed axle. Um, we've had some pretty good luck with the MP uh, assembled axles. Um, they have like a kit, like a deluxe kit, comes with the bolts, the the uh, spring washers. Um, the CV's already built, so like literally, it takes you half an hour of work. So the shocks uh, upper and lower should be a uh, 19 millimeter on both sides, but this one was different. All the bolts were different size, so we had to go back and forth. Um, they should be a 10.8 bolt, usually a K-Max, um, but uh, you never know. Um, I wish you could uh, get the history of your car and when you know somebody makes a decision to put a, a Harbor Freight bolt in it to get you down the road um, quick story had a guy uh, order a transaxle and he actually had a short axle on one side and a long axle on the other go figure on how that happened but it does and when you got to get home you got to do things you got to do um, hopefully when you get home, you, you, you remedy it and you just don't roll with it. So uh, the back of this Baja had some KY beads. I don't recommend those to my worst enemy. So I don't want you to do that. The front nose cone on this vehicle uh, was a rubber mount and the rear was a solid. Never, never something you need to do. Uh, solid, solid, rubber, rubber. So um, the mounts going to the chassis are going to be a 17 millimeter wrench and it's a 10 millimeter 1.50 thread. Um, most of the time there's a ground strap. If you're solid mounting, you don't have to do the ground strap. If you're doing a rubber mount, you have to do a ground strap. You can ground it from the uh, one of the studs there for your uh, trans mount to the actual carrier case of the transmission, which is like a 13 millimeter wrench, eight millimeter, 1.25 thread. So Joey is tapping out the stub axles. And if they've been in there a while, um, it's kind of a press fit, it's a little bit, uh, looser tolerance than that, but you have old seals, you have ridges, um, and it's, it takes a little work to get them out, but, uh, try to be some gentle. Don't, don't pick up steel hammers, uh, soft mallet. It's going to be better. So you don't damage any threads. Um, if you have a lathe, you can put these in a lathe and see if they have a wobble to them. Um, if they do, then you got to replace them. Um, if not, then uh, you can just clean them up with some emery cloth, polish them, um, black oxide uh, or gun blue with them, and they'll be good. You want to save all the spacers. Um, you can spin the original um, 
bearings in your hand, if you feel like a grit or a grain or has a high pitch sound, then obviously replace them. I'll put the part numbers for those bearings up here on the screen. Uh, Wolfsburg West, again, like get used to it. Uh, good guys over there, they'll take care of you. Um, but all the spacers, you're just going to check for flatness and grooves and and trueness. And, you know, just do your due diligence. Just don't assume that everything's good. You'll notice the nose cone seal is on backwards, so it needs to be flipped around. Um, we did that in the intro. Uh, not a terrible mistake, but you're going to get a little bit more of an air gap and you have some critters that can get in there. You have it in storage. Big bolts. They're 24 millimeters. Um, I'll put the right ones on the screen. And uh, the, I'll also put the thread size on the screen as well. The IRS pivot bolts, um, it's kind of like a reverse 17 millimeter nut that needs to go in there. It's kind of like a big Allen and Snap-on makes this really cool socket that's kind of um, tight radius where you can get a, uh, uh, a wrench in there. But somebody that came in here, uh, Joey's a buff dude and, and it's, it's, it's a little much for him. Um, but he'll get it. For me, I'm um, using a um, 19 millimeter uh, socket, and uh, these have a, a tighter thread uh, on, on them. Uh, one of them has a uh, 12 millimeter by 1.25 thread, and then um, with, a, with hex nuts, uh, I like to keep the bolts and clean them up and then use some new uh, lock nuts and hardware for that like washers and stainless whatever there you go Joey so this bolt is uh, got two uh, big I'm not gonna call them fender washers we're just gonna call them like thrust washers inside one on each side to kind of sandwich uh, the bushing into the clevis so don't uh, lose the washers so they're going to be a total of four big washers two on each side and the bolts clean them up and uh, reuse them again the torsion caps 17 millimeter bolts now these are going to be hardened k max usually um we sell a stingless fastener kit for this. Uh, the bolt um, is going to be 17 millimeter socket, but 10 millimeter by 1.5 on the threads. So the torsion bars in the rear are under tension. So safety is the biggest concern. So the caps, once they're undone, it's just gonna be a little pop them loose, but the spring plate itself is gonna be under some tension. So you need to be careful um, with, with, the, uh, with these spring plates. So you're gonna reuse them again, more than likely, uh, clean them up and uh, kind of go from there. But the uh, spring plate, you need to put one hand uh, on the spring plate and hold it because if you don't, it'll unlock and hit you in the grill and your dentist is gonna make some money. So uh, there's little holes um, where you can kind of get the, the pry bar in it 
and kind of just wiggle it loose. But you don't want to do any of this without having a hand on it so that it doesn't come out and smack you in the face. Take your time. You'll get it. As you see, we all have eye protection. So uh, take the necessary precautions to make sure that you're doing this and you're, you're uh, being careful with everything. There it goes. Just like that, we're on to the other side. You wanna save the torsion bar um, you don't need to worry about the donuts. I'll put them up here on the screen. Wolfsburg West again for the donuts. And unless your uh, vehicle was like super leaning, uh, you can reuse the torsion bars, reuse the spring plates, reuse the spring plate caps. Uh, we have uh, replacement hardware kits um, for the uh, spring plates uh, to the cap. So on this side, um, the spring plate has actually made an indent into the lower stop. So we really can't get it off of that. So we're gonna use this spring compressor for the torsion bar to, to lift the spring plate above it. And then we're gonna use a pry bar to kind of bring it off the shelf, you know, delicately. Uh, still need to, once again, uh, understand safety, understand uh, you know, everybody's like ready to go. Should this, you know, come loose, uh, take your time. You can go right to his face. Boom. <laughs> Always got to think about everything. So now a little pry bar to the side is not going to be a big deal. Get, get a good leverage there. There we go. And if the uh, torsion bar is stuck in there, um, just kind of vibrate it up and down. No joke. Vibrate it up and down, and it'll come loose. Since I haven't been able to find replacement um, heater tubes for the uh, little flaps in the back, uh, you're going to have to cut the welds um, so that those come off. And, and then you can clean them up and, and reuse them. We flip it up uh, to follow like the, uh, the union between the pan half and the center spine. And it's a good uh, way to just kind of follow it along and you have a good edge to use your air hammer and, and kind of pinch seam and, and pull it apart. So we use a Milwaukee Sawzall and a bimetal blade um, and we actually flip the blade around the other direction. Um, better leverage this way than kind of pulling it. Uh, up to you. Um, but uh, you can always use uh, newer blades. Um, but we put the dullest one possible for Joey. Uh, we just do that every once in a while. Just play a little, little gag, a little joke. Is he sweating? Is that sweat? Ah, no sweat. Going through the seat frame, that's all. Moving, 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 moving. Take your time. Don't try and cut the center spine part for the cleanest uh, possible removal. One down. 
for Pete on the other side. So we use a company out in Arizona called Express Stripping, and they submerge these tunnels in an ammonia bath. And usually that happens over like a week period of time. And the, the water will actually go inside the tunnel through all the tubes and it'll come back out looking like a brand new chassis. After that process, we have them sandblast it um, so that you know, everything is ready to go. Um, we'll show that in the next uh, video of us cleaning it up and getting it ready for Pan House. We're going to cut off the uh, lower uh, spring retainer studs here. And it's got the supports, the larger supports. Um, everything else was looking good. We had a couple dents, but we'll get those out as well. But overall, she's a good candidate. Mike's going to love it. We'll find out how clean it is later. So, yeah, just a little bend here on the bottom. Everything looks good. Get it loaded.